Okay, so good morning all. We are on to Mamu Javis and this morning we'll be trying to look at basic revision on our mock examination. It's interesting to note that when it comes to examination, it's a whole different world because you may know the question but there are a number of factors you have to contend with. Number one is your time. You have about one minute and 48 questions to solve each one, especially if you're writing the uh, WAEC or the WASEC examination. This morning, we're going to try to solve 50 OBJ questions. I'll be very fast, I'll be very fast. So I would want you to um, check the link supplied much later where you're going to have the soft copy of the question paper so that as you watch the video you'll be able to flow along with it so we'll go straight ahead to business because we have a very long day ahead of us and this is my first video for the year uh, it's been a very wonderful year i've been very 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 busy but i trust them um, you built my build me my voice seems a bit husky so but we'll see how that goes and then uh, we'll run the class as it should be we'll start with number one number one talks about tries to test your knowledge of decimals. It says 75.0785 minus um, 34.624 plus 9.83. Now, for um, most of the exams you write in Nigeria, you are allowed to use a calculator. So if you're using your calculator, it will be more than, you'll be more than fast trying to attend to the problem. But I'm going to go the old school. I assume I don't have a calculator. And like I always say, I imagine I have a visit from those people over there. So what happens? You must write the exam and you have to pass. All right, so let's see what happens. Now, you have subtraction, you have addition. I would advise you to do the addition first. Although it wouldn't really matter. And once you've done the addition, the next thing you want to do is to do the subtraction. This will be 5, and this will be 8, this will be 0, this will be 9, this will be 4, and this will be 8. I trust that at SS3, you're able to do your additions very, very well. So we want to explain to you why this is this and why this is that. I believe we're talking to a very mature audience. Now, the next thing you want to do is to do your subtraction. So that will be 5, that will be 4, 0, minus 2, so I have to take 1 from here, I'll be left with 8, and then 10 minus 2 will give me 8, and 8 minus 6 will give me 2, and this will give me 0, and this will give me 5. But remember that the question says to two decimal places. So we introduce a concept, we go back to our grade 8. Your SSC exam essentially covers from grade 7 to grade um, 12, which is more like GSS 1 to your SS 3. So let's look at this. So two decimal places means place 1, place 2. This becomes what I call, something I coined for myself, the digit of interest. And this is the digit causing the approximation. Now, this digit is not up to 5. And as a rule, if it's not up to 5, what to do is to add what? 0 to the digit of interest. So straight away, this answer becomes 50.28. And by the option we have here, that will be C. And I trust that we are spot on on that. So that's what number one will look like. Now we go to number two. Number two essentially is testing your knowledge of sets. It's testing your knowledge of what? Sets. Uh, this is a set given in... Um, what is called a uh, statement form um, or what you call notation, actually notation form, less than 7. What's the implication of this? It means x, the set, will be members that are starting from, you say they are integers, so it will be 0, 1, 2, 3, um, 4, 
five, six. Seven is not included. Now, why is seven not included? Seven will not be included because seven will not be included because um, it is less than. We have a less than sign there. If we had less than or equal to, we would have seven included. Now, there's something else you can see in theory exams. So sometimes in OBJ, they'll tell you seven inclusive. So be very careful to look out for statements like that. Seven inclusive. If you are told seven is inclusive, you must add seven to your arrangement. Okay, that takes care of that. Now we come to, okay, fine. There's something I forgot to do. I was supposed to state the universal set. The universal set is what gives me an idea of what range of numbers I'm supposed to use. So I'll do that correction quickly. And by that, I wouldn't be having this zero there. So the universal set would include numbers from 1 to 10. 1, 2, 3. You notice that in your question, there are dots. There are dots. Like I promised, I'll drop the uh, PDF copy of this with the uh, attached video so that you can go back and really follow up what we're doing. Now, you see dots. 1, 2, 3. Um, in English, it will suggest that some things are being said after that. So this will be 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that tells us that universal set will cover numbers from 1 to 10. Okay, that's settled. We come to Y. What is Y? We are told that Y will be elements that are what? Factors of 24. So what are the factors of 24 that lie within this range? We have uh, 1, you have 2, you have 3, you have 4, you have 6, and you have 8. Now the question says you should find x intersection y. Whenever you see an n, it will suggest that we're talking about what? Intersection. So what do we do? We compare. Intersection will mean that we're looking at elements that are common to both traits that are common to both x and y. I can see one. I can see two. Am I right? I can see three. I can see four. And I can see six. So with that, our answer becomes B. One, two, three, four, and what? Six. So that takes care of question number two. All right, question number three is testing your knowledge of... Um, Test your knowledge of indices. All right, question number three will be 27 over 64, or raised to the power of negative 2 over 3 times um, 16, or raised to the power of negative 3 over 4. Now, you can actually, because it's an OBJ question, you can actually use your calculator, but I am solving with the mind that you could have this kind of questions in your theory exam. So let's see what the examiner will expect of you. Now, there's no hard and fast rule to how we solve. What I would use would be a function of what I see in the examination hall. Now, the first thing I have noticed is that I'm seeing a negative here. So what do I do? I will flip it. So this becomes what? 64 over 27 or raised to the power of 2 over 3 times I could also take care of this 1 over 16 raised to the power of 3 over 4. That's what I will do. The next thing I will do is this. Because see, this is modern maths. There are certain workings we don't expect from you. It's a waste of time. Look at this. This is 3, is that not? What does 3 suggest? Cube root. So without wasting time, I will apply this on here. What is the cube root of 64? 4. What is the cube root of 27, 3, or raised to the power of 1, 2, equal to 1 over. Now, look at this. This is the fourth root. What's the fourth root of 16? 2. So don't waste our time. Sorry about that. And with that, you're going to have this 16 over 3 times what? 1 over 8. Am I, am I right with that? Yes. 
overnight. Sorry, that's correct. Because the, 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 the square sign is affecting both this and this. It's important to take note of that. It's affecting this and this. And so that will give me um, 2 over 9. So 2 over 9, that option is D. So that option is D. Okay, question number 4. Question number 4 is trying to test your knowledge of modular arithmetic. And the uh, little uh, background knowledge I have. 4x equal to 7 mod 9. Okay, 4x equal to 7 mod 9. Mod or modulus as it's actually called, 9. The concept of modulus is a concept of remainder at, at, at mathematics. If I say 2 divided by, or let's say 4 divided by 3, I'm going to have 1, remainder what? 1, is that not? This aspect of math is concerned with the remainder. So when you see mode 9, it means that any, any number that goes beyond 9 will have to toggle. Beyond 8, we have to do a toggle. So, I have 4x equal to 7. How do I solve this? It's very simple. What is this? Mode 9, is that not? So, when you want to solve, you just add 9. Because it's in mode 9. You add 9 to this. Are you going to have what? 4x equal to 16. Divide both sides by 4, and x will be equal to what? 4. So, the answer to that question will be 4, which will be what? D. Okay, in question 5, we are told to express this thing. 1 plus 2 log 3 base 10 in the form log what? P base 10. This is what we are told to express it as. So we are expected to express it. Okay, this ought to be Q. Now, look at this. We are told to express this so that we have this. Remember that there is a rule from log reading because, like I told you before, what you do is a function of what you remember. I have identified the base I'm working with as 10. So I can rewrite this. There is a rule that says a log of a particular base to a number that is the same is what? 1. So I will apply this idea here. So this will give me log 10 base 10 plus 2 log 3 base 10. So what's the next thing I will do? Remember that there's another rule that says that n log a um, base, uh, let's say b base a is the same thing as log what? b base n log b log b raised to the power of n base a. These are rules. So what I'm doing is that as I'm solving, I'm highlighting the rules. I'm trying to highlight my thought process. So what would this, how does this affect this part? I'm going to have log 10 um, base 10 plus log 3 to the power of 2 base 10. Now, there's another rule that tells us that if I have log a to a particular base plus log, okay, let's, say, let's call the base x, log b to a particular base, uh, this is the same thing as log a b to base x. So what I'm doing, transition from one rule to the other. So I can apply this rule here, and I'm going to have that log um, 10 times 3 squared is what, 9? And that will give you what, a base 10. I put that in a bracket just to tell for purpose of emphasis. And this will give me log 90 base 10. So this will be my final answer, and that will be option A. So option A will be the answer to question 5. Okay? Now in question 6, in question 6 we have, we have, 101 base 2 plus 12 base y 
equal to 23 base 5. Now, how do you do this? The first thing here is to convert all to base 10. Base conversion. You convert from base 2 to base 10 and convert this y, base y to base 10 and then convert 23 base 5 to base, to base 10. So how do you do that? It's, you do that by way of expansion. When you're converting from a particular base, from any base to base 10, you do expansion. When you're converting from base 10 to any other base, you do what is called division or long division. Just a call back to what we have done in your grade 9. Okay, some schools, grade 7. Now, this will now be what? 1 times 2. Let, let's just have this. This is 0, 1, 2. This is 0, 1. This is 0, 1. Remember the approach we used back there. So this will be 1 times 2 raised to the power of 2. Plus, I don't need to talk about this 0. Because anything that happens there will be 0. Plus 1 times 2 raised to the power of 0. Plus 1 times 2 times y. Now in this case, the base is y. Raise the power of 1. Just put that for emphasis sake. Plus 2 times y raised to the power of 0. Equal to 2 times um, 5 raised to the power of what? 1 plus, let's expand this out. I didn't push, uh, proportion my work well. Uh, 3 times 5 raised to the power of what? 0. Now, um, it's an equation, fine. So this will give me 1, this will give me 4. 2 squared, 2 squared is 4 times 1 plus. Remember that from your law of zero index, anything raised to the power of zero is what? One. So one times one will give me one. Plus, this is y. Plus, now, y to the power of zero is one times two. And that will give me what? Two. Equal to, five raised to the power of one is five. Means five is multiplied once. Five times two will give me what? Ten. Plus, three times one. Remember, 5 to the power of 0 is what? 1. So that's uh, 3. So we can add this up. This will give me y plus 5, 7. I'm not right with that. Equal to 10 plus 3, which will be what? 13. So y will be equal to 13 minus 7. And my final answer is 6. So let's see whether we have an answer there. Yes, and that option is C. An option to that question will be C. Okay, question number seven is testing our knowledge of simple interest. And we are told that the principal, so we, we try to figure out the details. An amount of 550,000 was realized when a capital X. So what we are told is the amount. And from commercial arithmetic, amount is principal plus interest. Amount is what? Principal plus the interest. Just put that so that you have an idea of where we're heading to. Now, an amount of 550,000 was realized when a principal X was saved at what? 2%. Now, that will be the rates for what? Five years. That will be the time. So let's, let's uh, list out what we have. We have the amount, uh, principal, uh, the amount. It's equal to 550,000. We have the principal, which is X. We have the rates, which is 2%. We have the time, which is what? Um, five years. We have a guiding formula that the, the simple interest is equal to the principal times the time times the rates. Or some writers will say principal rate time over 100. All right, so let's fit in this to what we have here. The amount is what? 5,000, 550,000 equal to the principal X plus the interest are broken out to be this. So the principal X multiplying the rate to times the time all over what? 
100. So what will happen here? This will go here. Uh, I'll have 10 left. And that will go with that. I will have one left. So if you look at this, I'm going to have 550,000 being equal to uh, x into 1 plus 1 over 10. Factorization. I have x here. I have x over 10 here. So I factor x from both. I'm going to have 1 plus 1 over 10. Now, by way of trying to write this as an improper fraction, I'm going to have that x will multiply. Now let, 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 let's do it. A, 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 a flip. This will be 11x over 10. Denominator of 10, this becomes 10 plus 1, all over what? 10, equal to 550,000. All over 1. So, without wasting time, I will just divide this. And divide this. I'm going to have 50. So, my x will now be equal to 50,000 times 10 and that should give me 500,000 as my answer and that will be D 500,000 as my answer and that will be D now please take note of something you, you will observe that I'm not using comma although sometimes we type and we use comma but standard mathematics of today modern math says we should not use comma we should separate after three digits with a what a space so take note of that there are changes in maths today now in question eight we are given an expression what are we giving testing our knowledge of sword and we are told to express our answer in this form x plus y root 15. That's what we're expected to express our answer as. So, how do we do this? Very simple. Some of us will say, okay, rationalize the sword. Okay, that's one approach, but I'll take a very different approach. I hope you know that this is the same thing as this. Is that not? Yes. So, these two can cancel themselves out. I'm going to have what roots. 3, I cannot rationalize this part over root 5 times root 5 over root 5 hmm? plus 1 so what does this give me? this will give me uh, this times this will give me 5 why this times this will give me what? root 15 this will root 15 over 5 let me do a, it's an expansion or uh, an expanded thought on this one now when you have the square root of a Multiply by the square root of a. I usually teach my grade to imply that it means pick one. Now, if that's too small elementary for you, remember that this is same as a raised to the power of half plus all times a raised to the power of half. Remember that when you multiply numbers, what are you doing to their in the index or indices? You are adding them. Half plus half is what? One. So that means a raised to the power of one becomes your answer. So you see that what we have done here is a line. The point I'm trying to drive here is this: don't say because it's a problem in in sword, I cannot bring ideas from indices to solve it. If you remember your indices, and that's what you are able to remember in the examination hall, please draw from that concept and use it to handle the problem. All right? So that will be plus what one. Now, it means that by comparison, x is 1, and y will be what? 1 over 15. How do you know why? If you look at this carefully, this is the same thing as saying 1 over 5. 1 over 5, sorry about that. 1 over 5 root 15 plus 1. So that will mean that y will be 1 over 5. And x will be called what? What would x be? x will be 1. I see that x is 1. So this is x. And this y will now be 1 over 5. So that option will be what? Okay, we're not even done. We're told to add, we're told to add them up. Okay? 
we are told to add them, so that would mean uh, x plus y will be equal to 1 plus 1 over 5. So that will be 1, 1 over 5, or it could be what? 6 over 5, depends on what your option is saying. I have 1, 1 over 5 here, so I'll stick to that. And that option will be what? C. Alright, so that's for question 8. For question 9, for question 9, we are told that x is equal to 3. This is basically testing your knowledge of substitutions. And y is equal to negative 1. We are told to evaluate 2 into x squared minus y cubed. That's quite straightforward. We know what x is. x is what? 3. So that will be 2 into um, 3 squared minus what is y? Negative 1. You have to be careful here. All is the power of 3. Now, please, let's recall a rule we had learned previously. Uh, let's see if you can remember this. Now, please look up. If I have negative a, all is the power of n. If n is odd, my answer will be a will be negative a. Raised to the power of n. When you talk something like this, if if you have a negative here, negative a or raised to the power of n. If n is odd, if n is odd, so we are expected to get. But if, if you have this and you have this, if n is what even. And that's the idea you need to have borrow here. So from, from here, you're going to have 2 into 9 minus negative 1. Because this is what? Odd. Because let's look up. This is a very, very important idea you need to remember. This is odd. If this is odd, the answer will be negative. If this is even, when we say all, it means 1, this is all, it's 3, so your answer will be what? Negative. So that's why you have negative here. So that will be 2 into 9 plus 1, and that will be 2 times 10, which will be what? 20. You have an answer like that? Yes. And that will be C. The answer to that will be C. Please take note of the principles. I'm not just solving the question because I want to solve it. I'm trying to draw your attention to those ideas you must pay attention to. This concept is testing your knowledge of substitution. Substitutions. So substitution. That's what it's basically testing. Alright, so we go to question 10. And we have that uh, 3x minus 2y is equal to 10. We also have that x plus what? 3y is equal to 7. Now, please let's watch. Sometimes we say these questions are cheap, but you have to be very careful. If you watch, there's nothing you can eliminate as you cite now. There's nothing you can eliminate. So, what do you do? You now draw from your knowledge of LCM. I look at this. What's the LCM here? Three. What's the LCM here? Six. The, the, the rule says use the. Um, Use eliminate the term with the lowest LCM. Why? Because it's easier for you to handle that. So to do that, I will create new equations. I multiply this by one, multiply this by three. I just rule off modern maths. I rule the line off. And then I'm going to have three x minus two y equal to ten. And this three, remember, would affect every aspect of the equation. And this will give me three x plus ten y equal to what? Uh, 21. Beautiful. How do I eliminate this? Because I'm seeing that they are both positive, I would eliminate by this should be 9. That should be 9. Because I'm seeing that they are both positive, I will eliminate with what? By what? Subtraction. So, I'll put a minus sign here. If I put a minus sign here, 
This is where I'm going to introduce you to something interesting. Now, prior to now, you have been taught that in primary school, that when you are doing your subtraction, you say what? Top minus bottom. Is that not? I'm here to tell you that you can do bottom minus top. You know, that's the problem with modern maths. Or would I say what you've been taught before now? We, all methods try to constrain your thinking. But it's not like that in modern maths. If you can come from top down, you can also go from bottom top. That's why you see, if you go to the movie industry, one movie that has changed the concept of movies forever is The Matrix. The Matrix. After the movie The Matrix, sorry, this is maths. That's where you put some to see yourself. When The Matrix came out, it redefined what we call possibilities in movie making. And that's what we're saying here. You must not always say top minus bottom. What about if your brain is taking from bottom to top? It's possible. So my brain is taking from bottom to top. So let's see how that works. So that will be 3x minus, that will be 0. 9, 9y minus, minus 2y. So this is what you have. 9y minus, minus 2y equal to 21 minus 10. So that will give me what? 11y equal to, okay, let's take it back because some of us will ask some questions now. 9y plus 2y equal to 11 and 11y will be equal to 11. Is that not? And if I go side by 11, and I'm going to have that y is equal to 1. The next thing you do, you put y equal to 1 in, now, proud to now, old methods will tell you, put y minus 1 or whatever in equation 2. Far, far, far. We are past that level. Tell the examiner where you are putting it. y equal to 1 is equal to what? x plus 3y equal to 7. That's, what that, that's where I want to put it. So I'm going to have that what? x plus 3 into 1 is equal to 7. Meaning that x will be equal to what? 7 minus 4. Minus 3, sorry, the brain is getting the answer before the question is even out. And x will be equal to what? 4. So x will be equal to um, x will be equal to 4 and y will be equal to 1. So that option will be D, if I'm right. So in question 11, we have that the implication of y, x, sorry, implies y. It's equivalent to what? The negative implication of y implying the negative implication of x. And that settles that. It's a very um, broad topic, and uh, you can actually use uh, what is called truth table. I've done very, uh, although I've not uploaded these videos online, but I have extensive work on this topic. I've done a lot of work here. Full videos on this one, but I've not uploaded them. They've not uh, passed through, they've not uh, gone through editing. So, but the implication, what, what this means is this if x implies y, it means that the negative of y will imply the negative of x. That's what it will mean. Here, order is important. By the time we use truth table, you'll be able to see. How this uh, how this uh, works out, right? So that takes care of question eleven. Let's look at question twelve. Question twelve is testing your knowledge of geometric progression. We usually use t. Uh, we say t n is equal to a r o n minus one. A r o where r is raised to the power of what n minus one. A being the first term, and r o being the common ratio. As different from what you have in your arithmetic progression, where you talk about common difference. Okay, so in this question, we are told that the first term A is what? 3. And the fifth term, T5, is what? 48. So what do I do? I can put this here. I'll have that 48 
will be equal to 3 r raised to the power of what? 4 minus, uh, sorry, 5 minus 1. n will be 5. So n is 5 because we're talking about the fifth term. So with this, I can quickly do my division. And this will give me 16 equal to r to the power of what? 4. 16 equal to r to the power of 4. So r to the power of 4 is equal to what? 16. Let's flip now. I go back to my indices. r is the power of 4 is equal to 2 to the power of 4. If their indices are the same, their basis must be the same. And r is equal to 2. That's math for you. There's no particular method to solve. Once your understanding is there, you should be able to clear it out. So that's the answer too, and that option will be A. Alright. Question 13 is testing our knowledge of inequalities. Inequalities. So I have 1 over 3 into 5 minus 3x less than 2 over 3 into 3 minus 7x. Now this one is very simple. It's very simple and straightforward. So what do you do? 3 over 5. Sorry about that. 3 over 5. So when you see a question like this, the denominator here is what? 3. The denominator here is 5. So what you should do is to multiply through by what? The LCM. And the LCM of 3 and 5 is what? 15. But technically speaking, we'll talk about LCD. Uh, in practice, it's not so much, there's so much difference, but because we are talking, because they are appearing on the denominators, we say they are what? LCD, lowest common denominator. So if I multiply this with 15, I'm going to have 5 into 5 minus 3x. If I multiply this with this, I'm going to have 3. That 3 will multiply 2, and I'm going to have what here? 6. I'll come again, 15 divided by 5 will give me 3, that 3 will multiply 2, and I'm going to get what? 6, and that will be 3 minus 7x. At this point, you can do your expansion, and this will give me 25 minus 15x equal to 18 minus 42x. Alright, now... If this is big, this is negative, is that not? Um, the antonym of a negative is positive, is that not? So I would, I would, I would rather move this. So I'm going to have um, 42x minus 15x equal to 18. Oh, what am I doing? I'm actually dealing with inequalities, so let's be careful with that. And you all just allow me to enjoy myself. So I'm dealing with inequalities, not, not equations. And these are the kind of things that happen in the examination hall. Something distracts you. And before you know what's happening, you are just helping the examiner to buy time. And once he just signs that, he just knows that ah, this one is extra problem for me to just stress reduce and move to another question. So fine, please let's, let's be very attentive and uh, um, this will be 25. Huh? So what is 42 minus 15? Sorry? 33. 33, okay. What is I share about that? 27. 27x less than 7. Let's check this thing very well. What am I having there? Uh, why am I having this? Minus 7. Okay, negative 7. Just, just one minute. I'm wondering why I'm having that. You know, sometimes when you're solving problems, okay, okay, of course. Sometimes when you're solving problems, you expect to have whole numbers. And as you're not seeing those whole numbers, I'm wondering, my brain is asking me, what's up? Now, you divide both sides by 27. And that will be x less than negative 7 over 27. Okay, so if I've done that correctly, my answer ought to be D, if I've done that correctly. So question 14 is testing our knowledge of what? Uh, testing our knowledge of 
change of subject or formula. Now we have k, please let's watch, equal to m minus y divided by m plus 1, the square root of that. Now, I've done extensive videos on this one. In fact, my grade 9 can handle this. Seriously. Yes, I've, I've been able to come up with a very simple technique to handle problems like this. We use the concept of antonyms. Antonyms, is that not? What's the antonym? The antonym will suggest words and opposites, is that not? So what's the opposite of forward, backward, is that not? So what's the opposite of a square? Square root, beautiful. So the rule says, transfer the antonym this way. So if, if this were to be square root, what would I transfer here? Square. So this becomes k squared equal to m minus y over m plus 1. Then the next technique I've taught my grade 9 is this. This is what? This divided by this. If you are dividing in this kingdom, it means you must multiply in this kingdom. So this becomes what? k squared into m plus 1 equal to m minus y. I'm not, I'm not putting pressure on my brain. I'm not putting pressure. I'm just keeping it very simple and stupid, and I'm going. Now, the next thing I do, I open the brackets. This will become what? Km, k squared m plus k equal to what? m minus y. Remember that. Beautiful, k squared. Thanks very much. Now, remember that my objective is to look for m. So I collect the m's to one side. This will be k squared m minus m equal to what? Negative y minus k squared. Now, I've seen this. I know there's a problem. So there's a way I can fix this problem. I will move this this way. I'll just have y plus k squared equal to m minus k squared m. I, I actually moved them. These are negatives, concept of antonyms. The opposite of negative is what? Positive. So if I move them this way, I should have what? Positives. Now, I move this one this way. This was negative before. It will become what? Positive. This one which was positive will become what? Negative. Alright? So with that, I will do what I call rewriting. I just juggled that just to clear. You must be very careful of negative when you are solving mathematical problems. Be very careful of negative. Where you're supposed to put negative, you put positive, it can wreck your work. So what I do now is to rewrite this m minus k squared m equal to y plus what? k squared. So I, I factor out, I factor out our m into 1 minus k squared equal to y plus what? k squared. What do I do next? I divide both sides by what I don't need. I don't need 1 minus k squared. It's an intruder. And that gives me m equal to what? y, squared, y plus k squared all over what? 1 minus k squared. Now, you can also write this to be k squared plus y over 1 minus k squared. Now, when you're solving questions, mainly for OBJ, be very careful how the options appear. I've had students tell me the, the answer is not there. And I'm looking at the book, I'm like, oh, what's happening? I can see the answer there now. What are you looking at? So you see that here. Okay, so if I'm right, my answer would be what? B, okay? I think I go with that, B. The answer will be what? B, Y plus K squared over 1 minus K squared equal to M. All right, so that takes care of that. Now, the next one you have is question 15. Now, there are two methods of solving this. I don't know the method you have been taught. Huh? Use any method you have been taught. There are two methods I know you can use to solve this. The next question. This question is testing your knowledge of what? Called symmetric properties of roots. For those of us who are, who are afraid for that math, you know that there's something called symmetric properties of roots. Try to go back to the matrix. You are giving the answers now. Generate the equation. 
you're giving the answers to what generates the equation. So we are told that the roots are x equal to half and what? x equal to negative 1 over 3. I don't know the method you have been taught, but this is a method I use from time to time. Now, I'll look at this part. This will be what? 2x equal to 1. Is that not? Please, let's follow. Look at this part. This will be 3x equal to negative 1. Is that not? This will mean 2x minus 1 equal to 0. Trying to keep everything on the left-hand side. And this will be 3x plus 1 equal to 0. Remember that the understanding or the, the, the statement driving quadratic equations is this. I multiply two terms such that when I multiply them, I get what? Zero. So it means that 2x minus 1 into 3x plus 1 must give me what? Zero. I don't know if this method is been taught. I will also try to look at the other method too. Now, what do you have here? This will give me um, 2x into 3x plus 1. And this negative will also be applied to the bracket. Negative 1 into 3x plus 1. And what do you have? This will give me 6x uh, squared plus 2x. The negative will affect the content and make everything negative. Negative 3x, negative 1 equal to 0. And finally, we have 6x squared minus x uh, minus 1 equal to 0. And if I've done the right thing, that means that my option should be what? D. Well, let's keep that aside and let's try to use the other method. There are two methods. Let's see if you would appeal better to the other method. The general form of any quadratic is AX squared plus BX plus C. Is that not equal to 0? That's the general form of any quadratic equation. AX squared plus BX equal to plus C equal to 0. Now, if I divide through by A, I'm going to have that x squared plus b over a x plus c over a is equal to what? Zero. Watch. This position is what we call sum of roots. And this position is what we call product of roots. So we have two crucial positions. One, the sum of root position and the what? Product of roots position. Fine. Now, um, uh, when we want to apply this, you're going to have that what? The sum of roots is essentially negative what? B over A. And the product of roots is essentially what? C over A. So we apply that. I just talked about position. Please don't mind the this sign here. I just talked about the position when it occurs. Now, when we apply that here, it means that for x squared um, minus sum of roots x plus uh, what? Product of roots will be equal to zero. So, if you, if you map this into your mind, what you need to do now is to say, I pick the roots and multiply them. If I add them, what do I get? If I add this and this, what do I get? I add half to negative 1 over 3. What will I have? Check. That should give me 3 minus 2. That's 1 over 6. Is that not? Beautiful. Now give me 1 over 6. So I have that my uh, sum of roots, I got to use the same as sum of roots, is what? 1 over 6. What about the product of roots? 1 over 6, one over six okay, is that not? Would that be positive or negative? Minus yes. Minus one. Beautiful. So product of roots will be what? How did I get that? I multiplied, please, take note of something. 
There is a sum, means add these two. There is product, means multiply these two. So the product will be this, and the sum will be negative, I think. Sorry, this will be plus. This will be plus, because I've already accounted for this as negative. So that should be plus. I hope I'm getting that right. All right, so the next thing you do is to apply this back into the equation. And what you're going to get to be x squared plus negative 1 over 6x minus 1 over 6 equal to 0. So what do you do? Multiply through by what? 6. And that will give you 6x squared minus x minus 1 equal to 0. So you see that whichever method you use, I rarely use this method, except I'm using teaching for maths. I prefer this method. This one is straightforward. You just keep manipulating them till you get to the end. You start by, for those of us who are offering for that mass, you have done polynomials. Yes. Remainder's theorem. Yes. Beautiful. So this is the implication of that. That you start with the roots. These are roots. You obtain factors. And then you multiply the factors and equate it to zero. All right, so that's that for that. Whichever method appears to you, and the answer is uh, D. Okay, I've stated that. 